Welcome to the BSc program in Human Nutrition and Dietetics. My name is Maria O'Sullivan and I'm the Associate Professor in Nutrition here at Trinity. In this short presentation, I want to tell you a little bit about our program and a little bit about the areas of nutrition and dietetics. To, to remind you, this is, program is part of a joint degree with our partners in TU Dublin. When you think about nutrition and dietetics, there is such an abundance of information available at the moment, often driven through social media, celebrity diets and the popular press. And when you consider that, I don't think there's ever been a time where it's more important to distinguish the facts from the fiction. And what's often, what's often absent from this is indeed the science. And that's why programs like this are important because as a graduate of a program, you will develop the skills in terms of the evidence base to understand and give scientific advice and guidance on areas of nutrition and dietetics. And I think moreover, at the end of this program, you would qualify as a registered dietitian. So we often get asked a little bit about well, what's nutrition, what's dietetics and, and what's the, the broad field really about? Well, there's probably two areas you could think about. One is health and one is disease. So if you consider, for example, nutrition is important right through the life cycle. So right through from infants to children to adults uh, and right through to older age. And then in areas like pregnancy and sport and in preventing diseases. But then equally, in terms of treating and managing diseases like very prevalent conditions such as obesity, diabetes, malnutrition, and then right down to the areas of very specific diseases that need therapeutic and dietary management, areas of oncology such as cancer, for example, um, digestive diseases, surgery, renal, liver, lots of speciality areas. And a program in nutrition and dietetics allows you to be the expert and to develop skills in the areas of both health and disease with respect to nutrition and diet. So I guess one of the things we often get asked is well, what's the difference? What's nutrition? What's dietetics? And does it really matter in, in terms of a career perspective or in terms of what you study? Well, this program is in nutrition and dietetics. And I guess broadly speaking, nutrition can be important in two broad areas, public health, where you're looking kind of healthy eating and that area. Um, and also then in nutritional science, which might be something more like studying a nutrient or vitamins and minerals, fats, or all of that very basic science area. Dietetics is important because there's an important distinction. It's professional qualification. Um, you become a registered dietitian at the end of this program. You can register as a dietitian. And that means you can work in the health service in Ireland or say the UK. And that's a distinguishing factor without a qualification in dietetics from a regulated or registered program, you can't work with sick people, you can't work in the health service. So that's an important. And this, this is an undergraduate program that allows to the qualification as a dietitian and you also study in nutrition, so both. So that's often what I, the feedback we get from students is that it allows the option to work as a dietitian or in, in other areas, which we'll talk about. So what's nutrition? Very briefly, nutrition is a branch of science. You study nutrients. It does what it says in the tin, really. And that could be from a very basic science level, like studying the vitamins, minerals, fats, as I've said, or equally right down to areas of food sustainability, public health, so across a broad spectrum. So very often, for example, you could be studying or thinking about areas such as, you know, laboratory based work like vitamins and minerals and, you know, the functioning and the importance and the role in the, the role in our physiology. But equally, you could be looking at diets over a long period of time and thinking, well, how does something like, for example, red meat impact on the development of something like colon, colorectal cancer over a long period of time? So looking at people's diets over long periods of time and seeing what factors are important in terms of disease prevention. So kind of primary prevention of diseases. And there are just two examples. And very often when you think of nutrition, there are societies that specifically relate to nutrition that would include um, the Nutrition Society. We would use textbooks and we'd be quite involved in the Nutrition Society in this program. Dietetics is important. Um, it's where you apply a lot of this knowledge. And again, a dietitian can seek to prevent disease and to promote healthy eating, but equally and really important is a dietitian in all is the key person alleviating diseases through helping people achieve a therapeutic diet. What that means is you 
in a therapeutic setting, working in a healthcare setting. You could be looking at anything from, from uh, say, nutritional supplements to, to artificial feeding or tube feeding. You could be working with celiac disease, with diabetes, and so on. Um, the professional body for that um, is the INDI, the Irish Nutrition Digest Institute. But what's really important is that it's a regulator program, and CARO is a regulator of these health and, and social care professions. So the title dietitian is protected by law. Um, CARO is a regulator responsible for regulating the professions and it's important that in order to qualify as a dietitian you have to meet the required educational standards such as attend a course, uh, graduate from a course that uh, graduates people in from dietetics. You're required uh, as part of that then you're required to be accountable to comply with codes of practice and codes of ethics and to continue continuously develop your, your learning. The professional body is the INDI and you can look there for a bit more information, but importantly it's the regulator here. The regulator is, is CARO, which are listed here. Well, I suppose in, in summary then, what you're looking at is this is an, un, the, an undergraduate programme and the only undergraduate route currently in the Republic of Ireland that leads to a professional qualification in dietetics. So you come out with nutrition and dietetics and as I say, the feedback from our students that gives you options. So I'll tell you a little bit about the programme then. What does it mean to study in the programme? What does it look like throughout the, the four years? Well, the four-year programme is delivered jointly with uh, us here in Trinity and with our partners in Technological University of Dublin, formerly would have been called DIT. So within, um, so within that programme then, you were based to some degree in, in Trinity, in the Trinity School of Medicine and also in Grange Gorman campus. And Trinity is a presence throughout the program from year one, but probably in reality, you see more of us in years three, three and four as we move towards the more, the more applied sciences and applied areas. What do you do? What does it look like? Well, if you look here um, in first year when you start off uh, at the start here, you're looking at a lot of the, the basic sciences here, which are important, your fundamental sciences. But there's a lot of, here in blue, there's a lot of subjects across right into the area of nutrition and dietetics and that's really really important and that's the feedback we get from students in green here are the subjects that the, the modules that uh, take place in trinity in year one and same thing over here too you've got your more your basic sciences here you've got a lot of uh, uh, subjects relating to nutrition and dietetics and then right into your placement b which is again run through primarily trinity and again, as you go into third year, you can see much more applied. These in, in green here are the modules that we deliver. So right through to areas of clinical applied classes, nutrition metabolism, which is one of the modules I, I lead, right down to therapeutics and medicine therapeutics. And again, um, more important applied areas of uh, these subjects. And by the time you get to fourth year, your final year is very much an independent year. And it really has two main components. One is a large placement, uh, practice placement at an acute hospital setting for 14 weeks. And the other part is an independent research project that you carry out for about 12 weeks. So again, they're the two big independent components you do as you're moving towards the end of the program. Now, if you're talking to people, for example, you know, around the program and you're looking, talking to friends or colleagues about it, there was a lot of changes made in 2016 and that means that you know people have graduated from the program more recently will have seen these changes so that includes things like having more nutrition and dietetics early on so you get a feeling for those early in your early uh, first year and second year and not not just towards the end we also include interprofessional learning, which means you get to understand about learning with other professions. So based in the School of Medicine is occupational therapy, physiotherapy, radiation therapy, other professions that you would work with in reality if you're out in a clinical setting. Um, and also the, the assessments what are not just written exams. There's a lot of applied learning, continuous assessment, case by course, so that work. So there is a, a, mix, a mixture of ways in which things are assessed. And one of the th important things we get asked a lot about are the clinical placements and practice placements. And they're a mandatory part of this program. And you have to achieve a thousand hours in practice placement, which is built in through the program. And we have them in three blocks and we call them A, B and C, practice placement A, B and C. And I think it's important to point out that for all of this, 
you're prepared. There's Before you go out on placement, there's a preparatory period, so a pre-placement. When you're out on placement, there's goals and targets set, and it's, you know, it, it has a structure to it. Um, and then equally, there's when you come back from placement, there's a consolidation element, so you learn you learn from feedback and, and from consolidating your knowledge, and there's always college support throughout. So that's an important component. We have three placements, so it's A, B, and C. The first one is, is at the end of year one, we have a community-based placement in the end of year two, and then your acute hospital placement in year four. And throughout that then, where there aren't placements, there are clinical classes to keep your skills and build up your, your skills and your applied knowledge. And when we talk about placements, it's really practice education and there's a whole team around this and it includes assessment, monitoring, support and very structured programs. So it's not a case where people think you go in placement, you know, and, and you're left to figure it out. Of course it isn't. It's very structured and we're required to do that. In terms of placements, there's structure and web resources and let's say pre-placement preparation and handbooks and many resources that go into developing placements as you'll become aware of. Program. And of course, an important part of this also is getting ready for placement is also the, the brand new shiny uniforms. And I think a lot of student feedback is that they enjoy being out on placement and being away, um, having the work element to it as well as the college based element. On that. What do you do in placement? That's a big question. You will see lots of different things depending on the stage. But ultimately, you will be working with patients or clients, with families and with other professionals, your other fellow professionals. You could be in an outpatient setting, seeing celiac, people with celiac disease, seeing people with diabetes. You could be in the community giving talks or educational sessions. But certainly as you go towards your final placements, a lot of that's based on the wards and you could be treating anything from malnutrition in an older person as part of a multidisciplinary team right down to acute illnesses with very specific requirements, say, for example, you uh, prescribing tube feeds and dealing with people who are quite ill. But irrespective of what you're looking at, you learn throughout the program a structured approach to identify a problem, to develop a specific treatment plan and to be able to apply that plan, whatever's thrown at you. So that's again the point is that it's structured and there's training throughout, like there are throughout the other programs where there's physiotherapy, occupational therapy and so forth. You are trained in order to achieve your, your goals on placement. So just a little bit about you know, our, the requirements or the admission uh, procedures. We have 25 students on, on the programme annually, so it's small. And again, the feedback from students, that's good. It's, it's very collegial. Um, the admissions procedures are through TU Dublin, and a lot of information on the websites on that. And I think it's important to also remember that we take students through the usual routes, through leaving cert routes, through international, through other um, routes, all the other routes, and also mature applications. But of course, the, the numbers are small at only 25. Points for the program are always around, you know, have been historically around 550 and over, so they're relatively high and also a small number of placements. So it is it is competitive. And like all of these health and social care, these health and social care professionals, uh, professional programs, there are many requirements and several requirements that are standard throughout all of these professional programs. And they would include things like international police vetting and health screening, which are standard throughout all these programs in the School of Medicine. In terms of graduates, what can you do? What are the opportunities? Well, as graduates of the programme, you are highly employable um, and you will be highly employable and certainly in either the public sector, private sectors and many, many who graduate from the programme would choose initially to work in a hospital setting as a dietitian and can, or can go on to other career prospects. But we generally, again, with 25 people graduating annually, we have good, ex really excellent employability, um, either people often going to shorter term jobs and then um, initially in, in the health service. The career opportunities are, are quite broad, really. A lot of people will work initially in a hospital setting, perhaps in community or hospital dietetics. A, but with experience, many go on to work in private practice, can work in businesses, be self-employed. 
you can work in public health nutrition because we said you can work in both nutrition and, and dietetics and people often go on to work in industry right through many aspects of industry from food industry to businesses um, right down to consultancy some go on to work in education like third third level third level like in the academic sector or we have students who go on to do MSEs, PhDs and I think really um, people entering the program now who graduate in four years time will see a lot of new opportunities around the changes such as you know there's a huge explosion of interest in health and nutrition around sustainability and um, and I suppose health promotion so I think that the opportunities will grow even more beyond beyond this. We try and offer very much um, to our students um, opportunities for various achievements and, and access to prizes, whether academic areas, and we're very proud of our students in their academic and their other general achievements throughout the programme. And some go on, as I say, to work in, post, in the postgraduate areas with us uh, or with others. But an important point throughout all of this is that while you learn very specific knowledge to the area of nutrition and dietetics, you develop your clinical placements overall you come out in the end with when you graduate you have these broad skills that map with the trinity graduate attributes which you may have heard about before to be able to think independently to communicate well we've excellent communicators to develop continuously and always of course to act responsibly but overall, I think in summary, I would say that this is an integrated program in nutrition and dietetics, so it's nutrition and dietetics, but it is the only undergraduate degree currently in the Republic of Ireland that allows you to qualify as a, as a dietitian, professional qualification in dietetics. And that's important because it allows you to work then as a dietitian uh, as part of a regulated profession. So you can work as a dietitian, but equally you can work in nutrition. So you come out with both. And I think the feedback we get is that it's when people are considering the programme, they're considering that this gives the options of both. Some resources, there are many resources on the web. You can look at the School of Medicine and a shortcut in is dietitian.ie and that'll bring you to our programme, um, one of our programme pages. I'd like to thank you for listening and hope it's been of interest to you and hopefully we'll see some of you uh, in the near future as part of our program. Thank you.